Welcome to Chatterbooks episode 4. Chatterbooks is here to introduce you to independent authors and books, to help you find the real gems in the huge amount of small press and self-published books that are available. This episode, I am pleased to introduce you to The Serial Data Shopping List by Morgan Bailey. This is the blurb from the back of the book. 31 dates in 31 days. What could possibly go wrong? Isabel McFarling is a recently turned 40 journalist who usually writes a technology column for a Northampton-based newspaper. Now her boss, William, has set her the task of meeting 31 men via internet dating within a month. Having an active, though fruitless, social life, Isabel knows what she wants in a man, so creates a shopping list of do's and don'ts and starts the process of ticking them off. Follow her ups, there are a few, and downs, there are many, in the dating process as she meets the many Mr. Could Be Right Except For, Mr. Not So Bad, Mr. Oh My Goodness, and Mr. Oh So Very Wrong. Chapter 1 They say it takes less than ten seconds to make a first impression. How's it going, is he? I look up, and there, looming, is William, my boss. My boss for not very much longer if I don't get this article right, boss. Good, thanks, I reply. Have it done in no time, I lie. Excellent. First copy on my desk by two, OK? Every time he says it, I think about how much easier it would be to email it to him or let him have it off the server. But he's a rather old-fashioned editor and to him, paper is king. I smile and say, sure. My readers know me as Isabel McFarlane, but I'm Izzy Mac to my friends. The only people to call me Isabel are my mother and my boss, especially when I was little and being naughty to my mother, that is. My boss, William Stamp, calls me Izzy when he wants something, which is most of the time. But if things aren't going his way, you get the idea. Being one of the few single girls in the office, and because I write a technology column, he's instructed me to set up a profile on northantdating.co.uk. So, armed as tall girl NN1, I'm to line up a date a night for the next 31 days and to write about it, because it's never been done at this paper before. I can see why. I should count myself lucky. Colleague Donna's latest task on her health and beauty section is yo-yo dieting. She has to find a new angle about it, as it's been written about to death. But then, so is dating, I suppose. With my profile containing the barest of very loosely based facts up and running, I already have one message from DB Vet. Hi, Uh, I see you've just joined. Me too. I'm local but not sure what to write, so we'll let you check me out. Short and sweet. Clicking on the View His Profile button, I learn that Duncan is 42 with his own vet's practice. I assume he's 6 foot, as his profile says 5 foot 12, which makes me laugh. A good start. There's no photo, but I can't complain as I haven't uploaded one either. I'd come to the conclusion that if this was truly going to be a blind date project, then seeing photos would rather defeat the object. I work for a local rag, and although my smiling portrait appears above my columns six days a week, it's old enough and black and white enough to look nothing like me, and I figure the town's big enough to get away with it. Besides, people are only ever interested in what the article says, not who writes it, aren't they? I send a rather forward, you sound nice, let's meet message and then read on. Duncan's interests include animals, no surprise there, reading, I'm a big fan too, and cinema, who doesn't? There's no mention of the other cliché, eating out, but unless he's a couch potato, that's going to be a tick. He replies, suggesting the picture drone, which does lovely food, so no couch potato. We're just meeting for a drink or two. The paper's budget only stretches so far, and with 31 dates on the menu, it may end up being a drink or one. I replied to his message and hit the send button. So, back to the article, or what there is of it. They say it takes less than 10 seconds to make a first impression. I'd hoped reading it again would inspire me, but sadly it doesn't do the trick. I sit and stare at the screen. The cursor flashes encouragingly, but like the page before me, I'm pretty much blank. I remember Sarah, a friend from years ago, and her list of things she didn't do. Shopping list. I need a shopping list, I mutter, but sense someone hovering over my desk. Surprise, surprise, it's William. Aren't you a bit busy to be thinking about food? That's Donna's department. 
I grin and pretend to type. He's not usually fooled, but I smile as he walks back to his office with a cup of coffee he's just made himself. His PA, Janine, has called in sick, which makes him even more miserable than usual. Not that I blame her. I open a Word document of notes I've ingeniously called Notes to go with the 31 Dates Art 0105 for the article itself. Remembering what Sarah did and didn't do, I create a table with such neatness that it could be classed as inane. I did say I'm a techie. A journalist or secretary would understand, and for the next 31 days I'm both. Journalist by day and secretary when quizzed about my profile by night. I start typing the list, but soon run out of lines, so add a few, then a few more. 25 lines later, I'm done. I stare at the screen. The don't column dominates the do, so I fill in the missing do's. Don't do, in no particular order. Trainers with smart suit. Greasy hair, dirty fingernails. Too young or too old. Too short, no arse. Boring conversation, accountant. Couch potato, nauseatingly smooth. Geek or train spotter. Old-fashioned, pipe, slippers. Addiction of any kind. Once kids. Smoker. Moustache or beard, unless goatee. Too feminine. No hard drugs. Too ugly or self-indulgent pretty boys. Orange suntans, leathery skin. B.O. Never left Northampton. Beer bottle glasses. Slurps his drink, sweats like a pig, ignorance, scrounger. Do in a very particular order. Tall, funny, good conversation, binman. Tall, non-smoker. Tall, intelligent, tall, smart appearance, clean hair, etc. Tall, some ambition, i.e. not a layabout, tall. Keeps up to date with current events. Tall. Passionate. Tall. Likes similar music, interests, etc. Tall. Well-travelled. Interesting. Tall. Likes animals. Tall. Rugby physique. Tall. Pays his way. Oh, and did I say tall? I look at the reference to the bin man and laugh. It's reminded me of a conversation I'd once had with Sarah, where she wanted someone with money, and I'd said I'd rather date a humorous binman than a tedious accountant. Being an accountant's assistant, I don't think she found that very funny, which went to prove my point. With the list complete, I feel slightly inspired, so continue with my article. And this girl has 31 impressions to make, all within the month of May. If you're a fan of Sex and the City or Bridget Jones' Diary, then have your very own local version. If you've ever considered internet dating, then this is the column for you. Let me experience it on your behalf. Follow me as I meet hot and cold men on hot and cold nights, the roller coaster of emotions, and at the end of the month, who knows? Will I find the man of my dreams, or will it be one big nightmare? I'll let you know. I add a shorter-than-planned review of the new E-Copter 3000, and then explain that my usual column will be back in June. After my thousand words are done, I edit, then re-edit. With the piece printed and safely stowed in William's in tray, Duncan and I exchange a couple more messages, and he's confirmed as tonight's guinea pig. One down, thirty to go. I look at the clock, and it's just after four. I need to line up more dates for the rest of the week, so do a search for some other men. Being five foot ten, I decide to select the six foot plus box, but then untick it as I remember it's for work and not for myself. Besides, knowing the lack of talent in Northampton from weekend jaunts with fellow Singleton Donna, and having read a statistic once that only 4% of the UK male population is six foot and over, I'd end up seeing Duncan every day of the month, although I suspect that wouldn't be a bad thing. Speak of the devil, fourth one down is DB Vet. The first three sound as dull as lard, but with so many, around 200 to choose from, I can be fussy. Scrolling through the first five pages, I refer to my shopping list and backtrack a little. I've ignored the ones with photos, which are surprisingly few. But then, having studied the pictures in more detail, I'm not at all surprised. Very good-looking men invariably know they are, and it's usually the cute rather than stunning ones that are worth following up on. 
I shake my head as I think about how clinical all this is, but then realise this is how a woman's mind works. Take my friend Sarah and her shopping list as long as, well, a shopping list. And if a man didn't conform to it, then he was toast. And whom did she end up with? A guy who ticked all the boxes? Correct. Sebastian ticked all the don't boxes. It goes to show that what you think you want and what you end up with are usually two different things. But then I'm not really looking. Am I? If you want to read more of this great novel, then go to www.john-d-scotcher.co.uk forward slash chatterbooks. There you'll find details of how you can find the book. Next time, I'll be reading from Horse of a Different Colour by Melanie Trudeau. I'll see you then. <laughs>